Hello, listeners, and welcome to another Morden Insurance interview. I am Stephen Almsman, and today, a long-requested discussion with Richard Lowe, the head of the Super Artist Agency and partner to Morden. Richard, it's a pleasure. Pleasure's all mine, Steve. For anyone who's just now hearing about us, we're the premier talent agency in Hollywood, and we represent heroes looking for work and entertainment. Remember, if you're looking for representation, you need the super agency. It's been, what, a year and a half since we last spoke? I imagine the SAA has picked up some exciting new talent that time. Anyone you care to highlight? It's funny you mentioned that. We just signed Hammerhead. If you thought he was a big name as a Super League goalie, wait until you see what he's got on the horizon. If his career is anything to go by, it's a concussion. Steve, please. Hammerhead's had a past, it's true. But we're turning this around. If you'd seen any of his one-man shows during the offseason, you'd know that a hammer isn't just for taking hits. It's also for tearing apart expectations. Hmm. I'll believe it when I see it. I'd like to take a moment to ask about Morton's new talent initiative, though, since I understand your agency is our primary partner in this phase. Ah, right. The initiative. It's true. The Super Artist Agency will be working with Morton's heroes to realize their potential on the screen. I understand this has been a pet project of yours. Uh, what was the motivation behind this push? The B rank. It's been an open secret for many of us that the difference between B and A rank isn't so much a power gap, but a difference in image. This is the first step towards addressing that, providing the resources and means for more heroes to get recognition. This isn't an industry secret or anything, is it, Steven? Uh, no. No. I mean, there's definitely distinct differences between an A-rank hero and B-rank hero, but I'll acknowledge that public perception plays a role to a degree. Almost entirely in my experience. That seems like an oversimplification in our eyes. We've heard the argument before, but you can't argue that someone like Schadenfreude could handle your average A-rank threat. There's a real difference there. Throwing your own heroes under the bus. Classy. I'm not saying that every B-rank hero should be a higher rank, and I'm certainly not saying that any A-rank hero deserves a demotion, but the system rewards a good media presence. It has been a notable problem in the past, that much, I'll admit. It's part of why we reached out to you for the initiative. We reached out to you. Details. Why don't you give us a preview of the ways the SAA will be assisting lower-ranked heroes with maintaining a strong presence in the public eye? I'd love to! Starting next month, we'll be connecting first-time creators within Morden Insurance with our newer agents, giving our agents opportunities to build a portfolio while creating chances to advance for lower-ranked actors. It's good for everyone. Look forward to the talent initiative coming shortly. Now, just for an idea of what our heroes have to look forward to when working with your agency, what are a few upcoming films starring our nation's most beloved heroes that you're excited for? Steve, that's like asking a high school player what Super League team they're looking forward to leading on. It's great in the short term, but sets up disappointment. Sure, but... So, check out Doctor of Sunshine with Dr. Laughter himself, and Death of Mars for the best A-ranked pair in Hollywood, Nutter and Peashot. Now, your agency has something of a prep course for heroes taking on major studio projects. Any chance you can give some aspiring heroes a few tips from a master of the trade? Sure, but we prefer to call them what they are. Actors. That word, hero, has become kind of a parody of itself. A job title, rather, than a meaningful word of praise. I'm sure we at Morden will keep your criticism in mind. So, the advice for our heroes? Right. So your first priority should be finding the unit manager or floor manager and make sure they have the correct power noted for you. This will save a lot of headaches, especially for those of you with shape-shifting or vision-based powers. The amount of ripped and burned costumes they deal with on set. Just a quick reminder that Morden does also offer production insurance for props and injuries. Ask about our discount when you hire a full cast of registered heroes.
Speaking of which, another tip is to ensure that the production is guild approved. Taking work that's off the grid may be lucrative at times, but there's always a reason that a director doesn't want scrutiny. Usually an uninsured workplace in my experience. Or they're shooting in Nevada, but list the address of the shoot at the border. D does that actually happen very often? I've heard stories, but none of my actors have been on a shoot like that. Oh, yes, it's quite common. Get the tax break for shooting in California, and the cheaper insurance of an independent city's provider. It's one of the largest reasons for film shoot-related lawsuits. Huh. I haven't heard of any newer agents from the Big Five pursuing bait-and-switch jobs like that, but I could see it being a common problem. Just one more reason to trust the agencies you know. Or to have personal insurance. With our recent acquisitions, Morden Insurance... It's your insurance is respected in the independent regions. That's surprising, considering historically the independent insurance providers have been quite vocal about their displeasure with monopolies. We at Morden don't believe in the M word. Also, you'd be surprised at how much leverage a few S-ranked clients can have in the independent cities. Yes, I'd imagine brute force is quite persuasive to villain-owned towns. As is mind control. An excellent point, which also ties into advice on set. We're always looking for more mind control and soothing powers. Getting into characters infinitely easier when even one Esper's around. I've always wondered why they don't just bring on Esper directors, honestly. Is it just old-fashioned attitudes towards filmmaking? No, it's just organizational. The mental types are always two in their own head. They're terrible at explaining what they need without breaking multiple SSPI protocols. That, and a psychic that's strong enough to handle every role, ends up making our house every time. Blech. Not that there's anything wrong with small artsy films. Speak for yourself. Give me a tentpole any day, I've got agents that need a payday. So would you say the SAA tends to employ big budget artists primarily? Well, yes and no. We advise every one of our clients to consider a safe, profitable career path with major studio projects. I hear Morton's got their own show in the works. Hear anything about that? I'm literally just an interviewer. Right, right. Don't get the wrong idea with how I'm talking. Of course we respect our clients' wishes and support them with any project that catches their eye. We just support some decisions more than others. Good point. Good points. Moving along then, let's talk about clients that have made particularly good decisions with your agency, like Animal Whisperer. Ah, Animal Whisperer. He's an agent's dream come true. He's got natural charisma on the camera, the most filmable and adorable filming crew in the world, and he keeps his personal life personal. We are quite fond of Animal Whisperer at Morton Insurance as well. With his prominence and skill, it's honestly surprising to me that he's still a B-rank hero. Talking with animals is a useful ability. Trust me, he'd be an A-rank if he wanted it. It's good for his image to be at a lower rank, but he doesn't have much to gain from being in the upper ranks, aside from tougher foes. Yes, he's everyone's favorite hero of the B-ranks, and proof that anyone can make it big, no matter their rank. That seems like a stretch. Beg pardon? I'm just saying, he was a child star. He never needed either you or the SSPI to earn his fame. And the data doesn't look good for anyone below A rank trying to get a starring role. I'm all for putting lipstick on a pig, but let's be honest with our clients. I am being honest. Look, I understand that from an outsider's perspective, it's difficult to see the subtle but important differences between the ranks. But it's critical for the safety of our heroes. Difficult to... Uh, Steven, there have been plenty of documented cases of B-rank heroes fighting and defeating A-rank villains. And likewise, A-rank heroes at being blindsided by B-rank villains. Sure, there's a clear power difference between C and B, that's undeniable. But it's shades of grey at best in terms of power from B to A. These shades of grey are important, and it's just another way to remember that any fight can. Furthermore, the data's all there on our end. Once a B-rank hero gets his optics good enough, he's almost inevitably approached for a promotion. Weird how so many of your A-rank heroes work in California and New York, isn't it? 
We have plenty of heroes working in the upper ranks around the country, Richard. I appreciate your attempts to challenge our way of working and thinking, though. Morin is always... pleased to hear criticism from our highly valued allies. Have any data that reflects our internal policy updates following conversations like this? Too much. Then you know what's next on the script. Uh, so any up-and-coming heroes Morn would like to promote? Oh, we've got plenty of those, Rich. Up first is a hero that's really grown. Huh. Into her role, sweet Rose. Oh, she's an excellent client. An agent couldn't ask for someone more proactive with getting good publicity between the trail work and advocacy campaigns. We've seen her star rise for sure, and there's always chatter about her upcoming projects. Did you know that Sweet Rose has the highest witness approval rating in A-Rank? Why would you ever have a statistic like that? You might as well call it viewer feedback for how useful it is. That's not a bad idea. Have you ever considered customer outreach work? I wish. Now I have to settle for running the most successful agency in Hollywood. Cried myself to sleep on my bed of thousands of dollars of bills, yearning for the five digits a year of your outreach department. Not all power comes from wealth alone, Rich. Sometimes having the right people at your back goes a longer way. People like Second Wind, the B-rank hero. Fun guy to party with. He's a hell of a wingman. Honestly, I'm surprised he's stuck in B-rank. There isn't a soul in Kelly that doesn't know him. Unfortunately, the nature of his ability makes him difficult to place. Pure support. He can't function without a partner. That makes a surprising amount of sense. Shame for the very supporting actor roles in Hollywood, though. You just can't compete with that. Oh, please. Everyone knows the awards are rigged. They're decided before the consideration campaigns even get started. I don't want to agree with you, but you happen to have a point here. Of course I do. I was part of that department for a few years. It's honestly one of the most boring departments in Morden. I don't know why anyone bothers with For Your Consideration videos. We typically have our choices made months in advance. That's surprising. What do they look at when determining the Morden Academy Awards? Well, this was the early 2010s but we usually had a few considerations. The primary question was cultural impact, that is, quality and profitability of the film. We figured that putting the two hand in hand would give a good picture of its overall quality. Eh, I could see it. Next, we tended to look at the location and individual performances, the actor awards. Right, right. So far, this sounds surprisingly sophisticated. You make it sound like Morden is only able to wield its power like a club at times. Careful. Anyway, the final consideration was the tiebreaker, their use of Morden-friendly assets. There we go. I mean, it's an award ceremony funded entirely by your conglomerate, so I can't be surprised. It was a tiebreaker, and nothing more. I feel like it's a strong system, and one which holds true to this day. Wait, was Second Wind on the committee? I'm not at liberty to discuss any members of the Academy Awards Committee. You could have just said yes. It does explain his winning streak, even if I agree with the decision every time. How about we agree that his success is a victory for both of us and move on? Agreed. So, what else do you want to bring up while you got me? I think we should close this out on a positive note. You and I have a few things to discuss after this interview. What film are you looking forward to this year? Uh, I see. There's an adaptation of Death of a Salesman coming out this year. It's got a few promising names tied to it. <laughs> you certainly know how to pick them, Rich. It happens that Morden's backing production on that reimagining of a classic. Thank you for your time, Richard. I realize you've got a lot of exciting developments coming up in the very near future, so I'll try not to keep you too long. Uh, right. Very exciting, I'm sure. Uh, thank you for having me. So look forward to the Morden Talent Initiative, backed by our good partners at the Super Artists Agency. This has been Stephen Olmsman. 
and Richard Lowe. Thank you for joining us at Morton Insurance. And remember... Hmm. I figured it would be good practice for you to finish the line. It's your insurance. That's right. Stay safe out there. Richard, let's talk about my recommendations. What fun times for all involved. This is Nick. Thank you for listening. Special thanks to Brendan for his assistance. You can find him on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Soondead, or on YouTube under Soondead. Thank you to my editors as well, you rock, and my patrons. Be safe out there, and remember, it's more than insurance. It's your insurance.